Hi guys and welcome to another beer review. Today we've got a very well-known beer and uh, something of a classic and the brewery, even though I've only recorded one beer uh, review for these guys, um, I have drank a few of their beers primarily long before I was really, really getting into real ales and craft beer and I don't think uh, Belgian ales um, were my thing back then, um, to say the least. I mean, I've got to be really in the mood for these types of beers now, just because of the flavour profiles and that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm so happy because these beers are now easy and affordable to pick up here in Germany, um, because I was initially going to wait till I was back in England before I tried another beer from these guys. But it is, of course, the Leffer Brewery, or Leffy, I'm not sure how it is properly pronounced. And this is a bottle of the uh, Brune Bruin Brown. Um, I think that's the translation. Um, my masterful skills of deduction made me come up to that conclusion. But yeah, Leffer. Um, I remember drinking this a couple of times uh, with my mum's boyfriend, who is a really big fan of like these dark beers and... Uh, like I was saying, it wasn't really my thing when I first tried it. But if you remember, I did a review of the Lethe, um, oh, the honey one, with the nectar, which I thought was absolutely beautiful. Um, the honey in that beer used so, so nicely. And if I don't mistake it, uh, Lethe is part of the AB InBev group. And uh, yeah, as, long, as much as, as, as far as I know, um, they've not been messed with. Are, are they actually part of the ABM? They've, they've got no information on the bottle about that. Um, hey, you guys know. You can murder me in the comments, as Jonathan says. But yeah, really nice traditional looking beer. Picked this up for like one euro thirty, so I'm not complaining at all. And they had the uh, the regular Leffer as well, and you could pick it up in four packs, as well as a couple of other Belgian beers that um, I've been to. I can't remember the name. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, but I know a lot of the online shops here in Germany are starting to stock more of the range from these guys, and even some of the stuff that you can't really pick up in the supermarkets back in the UK, because you can always pick up a leffer in a supermarket, it seems. And uh, yeah, so 330 mil bottle, waffling on already. Going to be using the girly cocktail glass of Doom for this one, primarily because my other two glasses are being used, because, um, yeah, I'm... Hopefully it won't be too late, but we're going to be doing a beer chat and I want my, you know, want to review my beers before I go online, even though I'll just end up breaking into my little beer stash and drinking something else that I've wanted to review. Shit happens, we've all been there. So, let's pour the beer into the glass. I won't pour it all in, just so I can get a good whiff. I'll put a little bit more than that. Don't be that stingy, Pete. Worst thing about this glass is it generates such horrible head, as you can clearly see here. So, beer in a glass, and uh, yeah, that is definitely brown, mahogany. You get some reddish hues in there, ruby hues, when you hold it up to the light. We have very dense, you really can't see through it. Um, of course, you know, you can't see through it, I should have done, not obscure your view completely, even though some may argue that's the best way to watch a Coolers Drink Review is when you're not actually looking at me. So beer poured with <laughs> about one finger's worth of a very creamy looking head. Um, I'm going to say slightly off-white, not too dark, not too pale. But um, yeah, it's what you imagine this beer to look like if you, like me, it's been a while since I've seen this in the flesh in a glass, if that's the right terminology. That's weird, isn't it, to refer to uh, beer as flesh. I'm sure there are some kinky buggers who are into that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it is nice, deep and intense, what you'd expect from a dark Belgian ale. And uh, yeah, I love the presentation of the bottles. It's nice and simple. And uh, yeah, so let's, yeah, it says AB in bed on the bottle. My eyes are terrible. I should probably get new glasses because these just don't seem to work that well anyway waffling on already let's get the beer sniffed and then tasted well i'm getting a really strong as lazy as this sounds belgian 
spice note to it. Very malty, uh, very caramelly. Again, a little bit of cinnamon in there, maybe a hint of ginger, like a ginger cake where it's not spice, spicy like stem ginger, more like the ginger that you put in like a, a cake batter. But yeah, very malty. It smells very brown, if that makes sense. But yeah, nice and rich, nice sweetness. There are maybe some slight dark berry toads in there, like black currant maybe, like prunes dates, that sort of thing. A bit bready, like brown bread, slight smokiness on the back end as well. A little bit woody as well. It smells really, really nice. And um, we're coming to the close of October as I'm recording this. And these are the beers that you're going to fall in love with for this season. So let's see how it tastes. Cheers. It's so flavorful. You're instantly hit with flavor. I love reviewing beers, but sometimes you drink them and it takes a little while for flavors to develop. You instantly hit with like this nice, treacly, malty, roasty, caramelly sort of flavor. Not too intense, but it does, it's left my lips sticky already. It's got a medium mouthfeel to it, but you get this slight velvety, like treacly, sort of like as if you've got like treacle that's maybe warmed up in the microwave or honey that's warmed up in the microwave so it's a little bit more liquidy and not as gloopy. It's that sort of um, mouthfeel and then it just coats your tongue, coats the inside of your mouth. I'm getting like hazelnuts in there, maybe some, like maybe a slight cashew sort of flavour. Very, very slight though. Stuff like Black Forest Gatto, Rum Raisin, all these nice intense flavours there. And this like woodiness, which sort of reminds me of maybe like a, a toned down bourbon sort of character, which complements those really robust and heavy flavours. But you've got these heavy, robust flavours, but the body isn't too heavy. So you're going to take your time purely for the flavours alone, as opposed to the ABV and the mouthfeel. That's really, really damn nice. I know AB and Bev gets a bad rap. And for the most part, these big conglomerates, I do find that um, necessary because, you know, they're pretty much... Not just destroying craft beer, but almost like self-destruct in their own industry with all these buyouts. And then you've got these big conglomerates buying each other and then selling little chunks off, that sort of thing. And they're buying breweries solely to like knock out the competition and then purposely like, you know, making that product lacklustre. And it's all about the distribution. Like if you want to stock our beers, if you want to stock this beer, you've got to stock our beers, that sort of stuff. These bully boy, you know, big wig antics that we're so used to. But then you come to the breweries like this, which I'm not going to stand here and say that this recipe hasn't been altered because, quite frankly, I don't know that. Um, I've not been doing this long enough to really know that sort of stuff. But this doesn't taste like it's been tampered with. This tastes like it's just been left alone to let the guys at the brewery do what they do. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very high quality, lovely, indulgent beer. And uh, yeah, perfect to end the night on. Um, and it's not going to be too heavy, so you're not going to wake up with too much of a headache the next day. That's really... That's really, really nice. Don't know what happened to my voice then. And I'd happily pick this up again. In the big 750ml bottles, that's my beer for the evening. That's my beer for Christmas, you know, at the Christmas table. Or after a big indulgent meal with family. It, it's that sort of feeling that you get with a beer like this. And, um, yeah, I, I really can't fault it. So, to me, I'm sure, you know, from my ex 
experience. I probably have even tasted much more flavoursome and characterful beers of this style. But for me, right now, as of recording this video, I can't fault this at all. It, this is really, really damn nice and I wish I'd picked up a four pack. That's the sort of impression I'm getting. So in terms of rating, it's got to be a 10 out of 10 from me. Um, another superb beer from Leffa. Um, I still think at this point that I like the nectar a little bit more just because of that that honey character. I love honey. Um, and you do get slight honey and molasses in this, don't get me wrong, but it's this like big, robust, roasty, sweetened malt character that comes through the most. And then you've got a nice sort of like spiciness um, from the yeast strain used in there. But it's not yeasty, if that makes any sense. Just a wonderful beer, and I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree with me. Um, so yeah, it's a 10 out of 10 beer from me. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, if you've tried this beer, let me know your thoughts, opinions. Uh, what's your favourite beer from Leffa? Um, I know they've got some nice uh, vintages and that sort of stuff that they do as well, which I'd love to get my hands on. But uh, yeah, availability, quality... I can't fault it at all, and I will be picking that up again uh, quite a few times over these next couple of months here in Arctic Germany. So, thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you'll join me in the next beer review. Cheers, guys, and stay safe, stay warm, and remember, look, look after old people this winter. Cheers, guys. <laughs>